So something that comes up occasionally uh, that I thought might make a good subject for a video. Um, people want to know like what's a good invasion weapon. People are like, what's a good weapon for an invasion build? Or, or you know, uh, what's a good invasion build? Um, and then people have this tendency to want to layer everything, sort of put everything on tiers. The the duelist uh, circuit, they're, they're, they'll do that occasionally. You'll see a new you know, tier list come out for weapons in Dark Souls 3, you know, weapons for, for duels. Nothing like that really exists for invasions, though. Um, I've said this before, but the PvP in Dark Souls 3 isn't balanced around how a weapon performs in a 1v1 setting. That's not really how balance works. You're seeing a couple clips here of how uh, an Ultra Greatsword just completely underperforms in a, in a duel setting. Um, when people duel, it's typically, it's, it's supposed to be like this competitive thing. Um, but really what it comes down to is who's, who's working with better equipment. Um, you saw Ultra Greatsword, uh, my guy just got fucking smoked. Um, and when I go to a straight sword and a shield, <laughs> um, all of a sudden I'm the one who starts doing the smoking. Invasions aren't really about who's better. Losing an invasion doesn't make you bad at the game. Losing an invasion doesn't mean the invader's better than you. Winning an invasion doesn't mean you're better than the invader. There's a whole spider web <laughs> that connects. <laughs> and basically, at the end of the day, invasions are not a way to judge who's good and who's bad at a game. Um, it's not a competitive environment. It's basically just a sort of, I was more clever than you, sort of thing. To the invader, the duel comes at the end of the invasion. After I've killed your two phantoms, and maybe a dark moon or two, or whatever. That's when the duel happens. That's when I get my duel against a player who's probably not as good as me. Um, not necessarily, but most of the time. And at that point, allocation of resources has become important, which it's not in duels. There's no reason to use an ultra great, or there's no use, reason to use a great bow uh, in, in, in duels. There's no reason to use the obscuring ring, the silver cat ring. There's no reason to use a lot of stuff in duels. Duels don't take anything in this game into account, with the exception of spacing and the R1 button and which weapons are best at delivering running our ones. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, if that's the way you want, you know, if that's how you have fun, if you want to duel people and see who's better at Dark Souls 3, um, then yeah, go for it. But in invasions, there's no tiers of weapons. Straight swords are still really good. <laughs> uh, you know, great swords are still decent. Curved swords are still good. Katanas are still good. This is where the balance comes into play. What sort of build are you using? That's where your weapon choice comes from. You should have a straight sword on every invader build. But which straight sword is best? The thing about invasions is... Not tears or anything like that. What it is, is... What weapon suits your build. What If you're using a strength build, what straight sword performs best heavy infused? Like, you can't have the benefit of a heavy scaling strength build claymore and a dex build Lothric Knight Sword. You can have a refined build and sort of settle between the two. But, you can't have both. So that's to me, personally, that's where balance comes in, is in that situation. I got really <laughs> lucky, I guess, and I got a bunch of level 125 invasions um, at the Cathedral of the Deep, which is one of my favorite places to invade. Um, now, these none of these invasions took place on stream, which probably helped me get these invasions because there weren't, you know, 20 other people watching and trying to get invasions in the same area. But this dark build, this chaos build that I run, is great 
because it lets me use a million different weapons. I've got ultra great swords, curved great swords, straight swords, spears, you name it. All kinds of weapons on this guy that I can play with. Now, I default back to my three standbys. Straight, great, ultra great. Those are my favorites. Um, but you can play with a myriad of different uh, weapons with a dark build, which is kind of nice. Um, and something like, you saw me struggling with the ultra great sword in the arena. That's not the case in invasions, because you can actually like catch people off guard and hit them with an ultra great sword. Or you can do like a turn and burn and hit three people with an ultra great sword. Something that's never going to happen uh, in a duel ever. Uh, so your tiers, quote unquote, they all break apart in invasions. And instead, what you're left with are weapons that underperform in duels, performing well in invasions. Ultra great swords, great swords, curved great swords, stuff like that. Now, all the old standbys are still really good. Straight swords, curved swords. Katanas aren't as good in invasions as they are in duels, but uh, they're still serviceable and, and, and plenty usable. But the real breakdown, the real tier system, is you're running a strength build, what great sword's best for that? You're running a dex build, what great sword's best for that? You're running a quality build, which great sword's best for that one? And I'm not going to sit here and, and name them all off, but you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Like, if I'm running a quality build, I'm going to use the Black Knight sword. If I'm using a strength build, I'm going to use a Claymore. If I'm using a dex build, I'm going to use the Hollow Slayer. Those are my great sword options. Now, you can go with whatever you want. But if you want the one that performs best for its class, then you pick, you know, one of the three I just said, depending on what class you've got, right? So, that's where, to me, balance comes in. Not every class, not every build is going to have the same um, options. Your options become a little more limited. What makes a dark build so good and a quality build so good they can use whatever they want. Your dark build, depending on how you build it, can use pretty much any weapon it wants to, which is insane. You can have the best spear, the best sword, straight sword, the best curved sword, the best curved great sword. You know, you can build it however you see fit, and you're not giving up anything, which is what makes this build so strong. Um, you've seen me use this Y-hander, the Astor's great sword, Lothric knight sword. Uh, just so far, you've seen me use those. Um, the Astor's Greatsword actually performs really well on this build. Uh, I said uh, in another video, I like to hit 500 damage as an Estus punish. 727. How about that? Jesus. So, take into consideration what kind of build you're using. If you're using a dex build and you want a curved greatsword, you want to probably go Karthus curved greatsword. Maybe Murakumo. Uh, if you want to put the extra points in strength. If you're using a strength build, you probably want to go Exile or Herald. Um, a lot of times when you guys watch my videos and leave comments and stuff, you'll say, oh, you should try this this weapon. And it's not that you're wrong. It's just that weapon isn't best suited for any of the builds that I have. Now, I could make one real quick, thanks to the uh, infinite respec glitch, which is nice. Um, but the, uh, the thing about invasions and invasion builds is make your build and then pick the weapons around it not the other way around whereas in duels everybody picks the weapons and then they make their build around it everybody uses the pontiff knife pontiff knight curved sword right and then you just pick a build that suits that best everybody uses a scimitar and then they pick the build that suits that best whereas in invasions it's completely the opposite and this is where the big difference comes from i believe insofar as character building in invasions. Uh, you make the build, and then you pick the weapons that fit it. Not pick the weapons, you know, and then a build that fits those. It's totally backwards from one another. Funny story. <laughs> I invaded this guy uh, three times. And every time I re-invaded him, he had... A freaking, uh, he was back in the same room every time. It was like, I think he was playing from a save state, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but he could die, load screen, ember, and get back to this room 
faster than I could leave his world loading screen reinvade. Um, but it was nice because it let me play around with a few different weapons. Uh, you saw me using the uh, dark infused claymore. Um, now I've switched to the dark infused Karthus curved greatsword. And this thing is great. 315 damage on a running R1? Are you crazy? Give this host plenty of credit, though. He was using a lot... Like, after I killed him the first time, um, and he saw that the black flame spam wasn't going to work because I wasn't running into him with my shield up, um, he decided he was going to try and uh, use Undead Rapport and Seed of the Giant Tree to get me, which is pretty clever. Um, and really... That's what invasions come down to, uh, is who's more clever, uh, and who understands the power of fucking verticality. Not necessarily verticality, but... Him losing that invasion doesn't make me a better player than him. It just meant on that particular occasion, I was more clever. Uh, in this invasion, and again, this was like instant invasions against this guy, and he's right back in this room. In this invasion... He just wound up in the wrong spot. <laughs> He's not bad, because that happened to him. You know what I mean? Just like, if these three dudes right here just, like, steamrolled my ass. That doesn't make me bad at the game. There's no judging who's good and who's bad. That's, um... Well, that's not necessarily true. But invasions are not the best metric to measure one's ability uh, when it comes to Dark Souls 3. But that's why I like invasions, is because they take so much stuff into account, as opposed to duels, which don't. Um, but your, your knowledge of the level's important, your knowledge of, you know, the enemy's aggro range, your knowledge of how to deal with multiple opponents. Um, see, these guys are doing nothing special. Running R1s with an ultra great sword, and casting magic. But it's effective, because there's two of them. And... What I'm doing is effective, because now they have to contend with the Ringed Knight, as well as me. So this can turn, you know, the, the tables a bit. But there's no such thing as competitive invasions. And I don't want there to be. <laughs> I don't want that to be a thing. Invasions are meant to be fun, and just an added extra little challenge to the game. They're not meant to be this metric by which you measure your skill even though I'm the best I'm not really the best but it's a fun challenge for people who think they're good at this game if you think you're good at this game and you think you're good at PvP invasions are the place to test that and to test your own skills uh, against those of other players duels are the place to test your PvP skills your your Dark Souls 3 Dual skills get tested in duels. Invasions offer you so much more. But insofar as such a thing as a dual build exists, there does not exist an invasion build. Uh, you've probably heard me say this before. An invasion build is an obscuring ring, silver cat ring build. A 40 vigor level 60 build is an invasion build. Uh, not a dex build or a strength build or a quality build. You can run any of that shit. I'll kind of touch on something I said a long, long time ago. A long time ago, I said anything is viable in invasions. And I've caught some, some slack for that comment. Maybe not everything's viable in invasions. Maybe not. I had to showcase this wizard. Look how well he played. What a great wizard. Seriously, that is a good invasion wizard. I will always showcase those guys when I run into them. They're just so few and far between. I think I was good at it. What I'm saying is, maybe not everything's viable, but everything is more important. More stuff is viable, and more things are important than in, in, than in duels. Invasions are a showcase for the game. Duels are a showcase for the player. Now, at the end of the day, it's still PvP, so, you know what I mean? Like, you still have to have some skill. But a lot of times, I don't beat people with my skill. I just beat people because I outsmarted them. Or 
I beat people because I was able to manage my resources better. That sort of thing. Look how much damage this guy's dagger does. Four R1s with a dagger. One-handed. In this video, I've said you don't make your build around one weapon. And that's practically true, but I will add this. You can find a weapon and say, hey, I want to invade with that weapon. I want to make a build for that weapon and invade with it. That's fine, but you're still going to use other weapons. I guarantee you that. No one weapon will solve every problem you run into in an invasion. This is a great way to uh, punish hills, by the way. Just, just run along with them. If your timing's good, you can still dodge when they finally get tired of you running right on them and they try and turn and burn on you. If your timing's good, you can play that way. You've got good reflexes. But just staying right on top of somebody when they need to heal is a great way to keep somebody from healing. But a lot of times you'll see people, they get so thirsty for that hit that they just mash out R1. See this guy right here? I threw out one R1 and he thought he was safe to heal, and he wasn't. Most people would have thrown out two R1s. Maybe not most people, but a lot of people would have. They would have thrown out way too many R1s, and that would have worked. So, you just throw out the one R1. Stay right on their balls. Don't let them heal. And if he has to make a decision between healing and summoning, he's going to pick healing every time. So keep him from doing it. Anyway, that's my take on balance, invasions, duels, etc. Uh, that's pretty much the end of the video. I just wanted to show this off because um, I know Revion's got a thing going on on his channel, on his Discord, where you can, you know, rank up in the Ladder Covenant. Uh, this guy has Master Rank, so if anybody was curious about uh, what what it looks like when you max out the Ladder Covenant, this is it. I'm done. I'll see you guys next time. Later, y'all.